Today we're looking at President Zachary Taylor. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. Zachary Taylor was the 12th President of the United States from 1849 to 1850. Taylor was officially a member of the Whig Party, but his personal political views were rather vague. Taylor was born November 24, 1784, near Barbersville, Virginia, on the plantation of his family. His father, Richard Taylor, had served as an officer during the American Revolution and was with the Continental Army at Valley Forge. His mother, Sarah Dabney Taylor, had married Richard in 1779. Zachary was the third of nine children born to Richard and Sarah. Not long after Zachary was born, his family relocated to Kentucky, settling near Louisville on the Ohio River. Zachary's education was primarily done by his mother at home, but there was times here and there that he attended school. From a young age, he knew he wanted to serve in the military like his father. In 1808, at about the age of 24, Taylor received a commission as a first lieutenant in the United States Army, commanding Fort Pickering near Memphis, Tennessee. Shortly after receiving this command, Taylor married Margaret McCall Smith, and together they would go on to have six children. During the War of 1812, Taylor was in command of Fort Harrison in the Indiana Territory. In September of 1812, Taylor successfully defended the fort against a Native American attack commanded by Tecumseh. Then, in 1814, he helped lead an expedition up the Mississippi River and defeated Native American forces at the Battle of Credit Island near present-day Rock Island, Illinois. After the War of 1812, Taylor moved his family to several military posts until in 1822 he relocated to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. There, Taylor purchased a plantation that would be his family's home. In 1832, Taylor took part in the Black Hawk War, and then two years later in 1837 was active in the Second Seminole War, in which he was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. In 1846, he was placed in command of troops in Texas. Ever since Texas had joined the Union in 1845, there had been a dispute with Mexico as to where the border between Texas and Mexico was. The United States argued that the border was at the Rio Grande, but Mexico argued that it was much further north. Taylor was ordered by President James Polk to march troops into the disputed borderland region. On April 25, 1846, American troops were attacked by the Mexican Army, and the Mexican-American War was now underway. Taylor would be promoted to the rank of Major General while winning victories in northern Mexico at the Battle of Monterey and Buena Vista. Taylor became a national hero, with many comparing him to George Washington and Andrew Jackson. The ultimate victory for the United States in the Mexican-American War only served to further Zachary Taylor's popularity. Soon, talk began that Taylor should run for president. Interestingly, Taylor did not want to align himself with either the Democrats or the Whig Party. Instead, he thought of himself as an independent. On the major issue of the day, slavery, Taylor argued to not allow slavery to expand to new territories. Taylor was a slave owner himself, but he did not believe the major crops like cotton could be grown in the West. Therefore, in his mind, slavery wasn't necessary there. By 1848, Taylor did align himself with the Whig Party. Taylor chose Millard Fillmore from New York to be his running mate. Democratic President James K. Polk had chosen not to run for re-election, but the Democrats running against Taylor were split when former President Martin Van Buren broke from the Democrats and ran for president on the Free Soil Party ticket, while the Democrats officially nominated Lewis Cass of Michigan. Taylor was able to defeat both Van Buren and Cass by winning 47% of the popular vote and the Electoral College. Taylor would be the last president in U.S. history elected that was not part of either the Republican or Democratic Party. As Taylor took office, the main issue was how to deal with lands gained after the Mexican-American War. Taylor pushed for settlers in California and New Mexico to go ahead and apply for statehood, knowing they would enter the Union as free states. In Congress, Henry Clay crafted the Compromise of 1850 to attempt to give some concessions to the South if California enters as a free state and threw off the balance between free and slave states. 
Taylor refused to support the compromise and insisted California should enter without any compromise. This angered Southerners who threatened to secede to which Taylor responded that he would meet their threats with force. On July 4, 1850, Taylor attended a party at the Washington Monument to raise funds to complete the structure. At the party, Taylor ate a large amount of raw cherries and iced milk. The following day, Taylor began to display symptoms of a serious intestinal illness. Doctors soon diagnosed him with cholera. His condition continued to deteriorate until he died on July 9th of 1850 at the age of 65. Vice President Millard Fillmore assumed the office as the 13th President of the United States and soon signed the Compromise of 1850 Acts into law. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.